discussion of floating point numbers. Um, and uh, in order to, I guess, um, motivate, well, let's just pick two numbers, encode them, and then we'll think about how we would add the two numbers, okay? Uh, so just for, I'm going to kind of pick these at random. Let's do, say, 1.25 and uh, how about 3.5? Uh, okay, nothing particularly special there. Um, so first off, we need to encode each of them. So let's start with 1.25. Okay, what's the first step here? So the first step is sort of to write it in binary style scientific notation. Okay, so I would write 1.01 .01 times 2 to the 0. Okay. Um, and then in this case, does the number, does what I've written down adhere to our rule that there's exactly one thing before the radix? It already does, okay. So the only thing I need to do is just tack on two zeros so that we have the appropriate number of bits for each part. Okay, so this means that our mantissa is this, and our exponent is, of course, there. And so the encoding would be, what's the sign? Zero, so positive. What's the exponent? Well, it's a zero, right? Okay, the, the exponent's value is zero. What do I have to do to that, though? Add three, and I'm going to encode that. Okay, so what is three using three bits? Zero, one, one. Okay, so I've got my sign, I've got my exponent, and then we'll put our mantissa. Okay, okay so far? All right, what about the mantissa? Well, we already figured that out. It's 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so that is the encoding uh, represents 1.25 as a float 8. Okay, And here I'm using float 8 just to represent that we're doing floating point but we're only using eight bits as opposed to um, doing it in 1632-bit or 64-bit. Um, yeah, uh, right, okay. So this one was a little easier because uh, it just by coincidence, we already only had one thing before the radix, and so we didn't have to do any shifting, okay? We will for 3.5, um, but, uh, yeah, so in this case, we just got kind of got a little lucky. Okay, so do the same thing for 3.5. Step one, write it in sort of binary style scientific notation. So we would have 1.1 1, 1. 1 times 2 to the 0. Okay, and I'm going to tack on a couple of zeros so that I have the right number of things. Okay, so the stuff before the radix, right? Three, one, one. Uh, the stuff after the radix, well, 0. 0.5 is a one in the halves place, so there we go. Okay, the, this, however, does not conform to our rule uh, about the number of digits or bits before the radix. It has two of them in front, but it should only have one. So what I need to do is shift it and if I shift the radix left by one, then that's equivalent to raising the exponent by one. Or not equivalent to, but um, I make up for that by raising the exponent by one. Okay. Um, okay, and so now does the representation conform to our rule? Okay, so we're ready to actually do the encoding. All right, so the encoding Sign bit still a zero. Exponent appears to be one, but what do I have to do to it? Add three, 
and so that gives me four. What's four in three bits? One, zero, zero. And then what was our mantissa? One, one, zero, zero. Okay, so this reps, uh, what was it, 3.5 as a float eight. Okay, so we've got the encoding of the two numbers. Um, and then we want to figure out, well, how do we actually add these two things? Okay. Now, we could cheat here, if you will, because do we know what the answer ought to be? Yeah, it ought to be 3.75. We could write down the encoding for that, and that ought to be the answer. Okay. Um, and I say ought to be the answer. It will in this case, but uh, we'll do an example later where the answer you get isn't the answer you think you're going to get. Okay, because of a precision issue. Okay, um, okay. in order to motivate how we'll actually have to add these, let me change the subject temporarily and let's go back to just like base 10 stuff. Okay, so scientific notation from back um, before we did any of this binary nonsense. Okay, um, and then we'll return to the question. So if I wanted to add Let's just make up two numbers that are in scientific notation. Okay, doesn't really matter. So like, let's say I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and let's ha say I had 7.51 times 10 to the 20th. Okay, and again, I'm just making up the numbers. It doesn't really matter for this purpose. Okay, all right, so, Let's suppose that I want to add those together. I can't just do that right yet, okay? I can't just say, oh, well, it will be 13.53 times 10, oh, no, no, no. Okay, because what's the problem with the exponents? They don't match, <clears throat> okay? I can only do that uh, just add the, the parts before the exponent uh, if the two exponents match, but they don't currently match, okay? So what this means is I need to change one of their exponents so it matches the other one. And there are two ways that I could do that, right? Because I got two numbers. I could make the 23 become a 20, or I could make the 20 become a 23. Which one of those options should I choose? Yeah. Why? 20 to 23. Uh, okay, fair point. Uh, because when we, uh, we will actually have to, though, because we'll add the 6 and the 7, we'll get 13, and that'll require another shift. But... The reason that we want to add, mess with the one that has the exponent of 20 is because it's the smaller of the two exponents, okay? And um, that may not seem like it's important, but uh, it will result in, if we're going to lose precision, would you rather lose precision of in the ones place or in the hundredths place? you'd rather lose precision in the smaller place values. Okay, now this will not really manifest itself quite um, as, as it, it's not as big of a deal when you do this in, uh, um, in math, okay, because in math, I just write down however many digits I need, right? Do, I, do we normally in math say, thou shalt use exactly six digits or whatever? No, we just write down however many you need. Uh, contrast that with the binary issue. Okay, so I need to make these exponents match. And in order for me to do so, I'll leave the first one alone. And then the second one, okay, remember our convention is that numbers that uh, obey the rule of having one thing before the radix, we call those normal or normalized, okay? And so I'm going to deliberately denormalize the number by um, 
Well, okay, so what should it be? 0.751 times 10 to the 21st. I got to keep going, right? Two more places, and so what would it be? 0, 0, 0,751. That many positions. Right? Every time I shift the radix to the right, I make up for that by increasing the exponent. Okay, so do you guys agree that all three of those numbers on the right really are the same thing? It's just they look different. Okay. Okay, so uh, now why did I make it 23? Well, because I want it to match the other one. Okay, and the reason I want to match the other one is because then I get to do the following. Well, they both have a times 10 to the 23 attached to it, correct? So can I just factor that out? Yeah? And then I can just add the bit in the parentheses, and so what do I get there? Um, and actually, no, we aren't going to get 13 because I'm a moron. Um, what do I get here? Well, 6.02751 times 10 to the 23rd. And that's our, our sum. Yes. Okay. Um, and so, so his point is right here, I factored out 10 to the 23, right? I could have factored out 10 to the 20th at the beginning. And then that would have meant that the first term would have had a, a 10 to the third attached to it still. Okay. Um, and which I could have then fixed by shifting, okay? Um, even though they're mathematically equivalent, this is maybe a bit more accurate in terms of how the hardware will, on a computer actually does it, okay? Okay, so we deliberately denormalized one of the numbers by shifting and messing with its exponent, and then we could do the addition, and then we look at the pieces and see if we need to do anything. Okay, so for example here, when I added the stuff in parentheses, uh, did I end up with more than one digit before the radix? In this case, no, but I could have, right? So for example, let's say I'd added 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd to itself. I would have gotten 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd, right? Then I'd have to fix that. Um, so in this case, there's nothing to do, right? We're finished. Okay. Now, the bit about why did we choose to denormalize the number that had the smaller exponent, okay? Let's suppose, just temporarily, that I said you get to write down three digits. Would you rather lose these two, or would you rather lose those two? You'd rather lose the, the, the digits that are of lesser precision than... Or, or sorry, lesser value than the ones of greater value, okay? And so maybe to kind of exaggerate this, would you rather have 6.0, um, which is closer to the original number, 6.0 or 0.02? 6.0 is much preferred to 0.02, right, in terms of how close it is to the, the actual mathematical answer, okay? So if you lose precision, okay, when you do one of these operations, uh, you have truncated, basically. It's a truncation error, okay? Um, and they are inevitable at some point with floating point numbers, okay? Now, when we do this with 8-bit floating point numbers, it really exaggerates how often this happens, okay? But normally, like in computer terms, you don't really have to worry about it because the precision is so great to begin with that a tiny loss of precision is kind of like, eh, whatever, right? It's kind of like if I asked you to measure the distance from the chapel to the flagpole in meters, 
right? And all I gave you was a meter stick with no markings on it, right? What would be the best precision you could get? Yeah, to the nearest meter, right? You'd get, you know, okay, it's 57 and part of the next meter. And you could maybe estimate how much of that next meter it is, but you couldn't go any more precise than that. Okay, well, if I gave you a nanometer ruler, just a little stick that's one nanometer long, and sent you out to go measure it, right? I mean, a nanometer, that's a little bit ridiculous, but you guys get the idea, right? Would you rather lose precision of one nanometer, or would you rather lose precision of one meter? Definitely the nano, is particularly if you're measuring all the way out to the flagpole, okay? Okay, so... Um, in when we write these things down mathematically, we don't really lose this precision. We just write down however many digits. And maybe in like lab class or something, you guys might have just said, okay, I'll just write it as 7.03 times 10 to the 23rd and call it a day, right? Because like that, the actual arithmetic is not the point. The point is sort of roughly how big the number is. Um, and, uh, of course, what's the one other thing that you have to worry about in, in laboratory settings? Excuse me. Yeah, sig figs, which are a reflection of the fact that anytime you use an instrument to make a measurement, what inherently do you have to worry about? Human error, but also the precision of whatever instrument, you know, there's an, every number you measure, there's some sort of a uncertainty attached to it. Okay, um, that uncertainty may be ridiculously small and negligible from a like real world standpoint, but like you have to worry about that. In math class, we just make up all the numbers anyway, so who cares? Okay, um, okay, good. All right, so let's return to the question of where we started with this, which is I want to add up those two numbers. Okay. Now, the answer we ought to get is 3.75, right? Last time I checked, that's what 1.25 and 3.5 were added together, okay? But what we want to do is uh, go through the process similar to what we did down at the bottom with the base 10 numbers, okay? But now we're just doing it in binary. Okay, so makes sense what the question is. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to need some space, so let me go over to a clean sheet, and if somebody would be so kind, oops, as to remind me, what was the encoding uh, we had? This was 1.01 .01 times 2 to the 0, and the encoding was 0 sine bit, 3 for the exponent, and what was the mantissa? 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so this was our encoding. And then 3.5 we wrote as 1 point, um, 1, 1, 0, 0 times 2 to the first, and that was encoded as um, 1, 1, 0, 0. Yes? Okay, so that's just copying down what we had before. Okay, so... If I wanted to add these as is, okay, let me put the bigger one to the left and the smaller one to the right, okay? And underneath of that, I'm going to write their encodings um, Like so, okay. So the, the the thing in the box is just what the actual encoding is, and the thing right above it is what it sort of represents um, you know, to us as humans. Okay. Okay. So like the previous problem, the I can't just directly add these two things because the exponents do not match. Okay. So I need to deliberately screw up one of the numbers in order to make the exponents match. Okay, 
So if I'm going to do that, um, which number do I want to mess with? I want to mess with the one that has the smaller of the two exponents, okay, the one that has the zero. And I can do this by doing shifting this way and compensating by increasing the exponent. Okay, do we agree that those two things, 1.01 times 2 to the 0 and 0 0.101 times 2 to the first, are equivalent mathematical expressions? Okay, now, I can't write down the encoding, okay, for this, um, because it violates our rule, right? What was our rule about uh, what goes in front of the radix? It was always a one, okay? And that one, we never actually encoded that one. We just assumed it was there, okay? Um, and so I can't really write down the encoding of this um, because that one is sort of missing, okay? Um, okay, so um, what about the original, or sorry, the first number? Well, we have this, yes? Okay, so one point... 1.11 times 2 to the first. Okay, now do the exponents match? They do. Okay, so I can factor and do like what we did a minute ago. And so I'd have 1.11 plus 0 0.101 times 2 to the first. Okay. All right, now we need to add what's in the parentheses. So let me write it this way. Just for uh, ease of us being human. Okay, and so what am I going to get if I start adding up all these bits? Well, I'll get a 1 there, no carry. A 1 there, no carry. A 0 here with a carry, a 0 here with a carry, and a 1. Okay. Okay, yes? All right, so um, what's the problem with the way the answer looks? Yeah, it's not normalized, okay? So uh, this didn't happen in the, the example we did a minute ago, um, just because of the numbers I picked. But here, what happened is the sum, we ended up with more than one thing before the radix, because we ended up with a carry in, in this particular case. So this number isn't normalized. Well, that's okay. Can I fix that? Yeah, okay. So I can fix that. Which direction do I need to move my uh, radix? to the left, and moving the radix to the left is equivalent to, or is made up for by um, uh, hold on, uh, coffee needs to kick in for a moment, by increasing the exponent, yeah, okay. So this would be 1.0011 times 2 to the second. No, sorry. Um, are we correct there? Yeah, okay. Um, 
yeah, my brain is just not functional yet. Okay, so um, does this number, um, no, that's not right, guys. Okay. Um, okay, hold on. Let's go back a minute. Okay. Um, oh, God, I'm an idiot. Sorry, I'm looking at the was thinking back to the original numbers and I'm like, oh, but the sum should be 3.75, but what should it be? 4.75. <laughs> the coffee hasn't kicked in. Okay, we're, we're, we're good. Okay, so uh, times two to the second, okay? All right, now, uh, if I wrote, well, okay, so, yeah, so we're, we're good. We're good. Okay. All right. So accordingly, then, what is the uh, exponent of my answer? It appears to be a 2, but what do I actually encode? 5, 3 bigger than that. Okay. And so my encoding for the answer is 0 for the sign because we added two positives. Okay. The exponent we just said was 5, which would be 1, 0, 1. And then what's my mantissa? Zero, zero, one, one, okay, which was this bit here. Okay. Okay, now let's make sure that this actually represents the thing that we think it represents, right? What should the answer be? 4.75, okay? We agree that we're not uh, idiots, yes? Okay. So if I go back to this, well, uh, yeah, Brad. If I go back to that there and I pop the ec or the uh, thing over one more, I would have one zero zero point one one times two to the zero, and then times two to the zero I can just ignore because that doesn't do anything. And this is in fact four point uh, seven five. Okay, so good, we got the answer we were supposed to get one site you know, stopped being a moron, um, and everything worked out. Okay. So, kind of makes sense. It's the exact same process as doing this in base 10, except it's in binary. Yay. Okay. Now, this did not happen in this particular, or what I'm about to mention didn't happen with this particular example. Okay, but let's look at the resulting sum after we did the addition. How many bits were there? Five. Okay, is that the correct number or a good number? Yeah, because we get a one for free and then the four following bits become our mantissa, right? And so if you end up with five there, and the first one's a one, you're in good shape because you've got, okay, this is the, the magic one that I don't have to encode, and then the other stuff is my mantissa. Okay, wonderful. But what about if there had been some extra bits past that? You lose them. Okay, because we only get to write down a four-bit mantissa. Let's say that I needed seven bits to actually get the precision. Well... You only get four. So which four would you rather have? The most significant four or the least significant four? The most significant, okay? So any error, any truncation error, you want to be from the least significant end, not the most significant end, okay? And this would be like, would you rather have, so say your number is 6.02, and I say you get to write down exactly two digits. Would you rather write down 6.0 or 
or 0.02. If you're going to lose a digit, which would you rather lose? You'd rather lose the 2 because it's in the position of least significance. And the 6 is in the position of most significance. Okay, so if this, this by the way, is why, which number did I denormalize? The one with the smaller exponent, deliberately, okay? Because I want, if I'm going to lose precision, I want to lose precision in the smaller uh, positions than in the bigger ones, okay? And it's sort of inevitable that I might lose precision, okay? There's just no way around that, okay? Good? All right, so um, let's maybe look at uh, um, this. Let me pop open our float toy program um, from before. Sorry, that's from a video game I was playing this weekend. Okay. Um, and let's just, let's pick the 16-bit example for, for sake of demonstration. Okay, so if I do 0.1, this is as good as this num this thing can get in uh, 16 bits for 0.1. 1. 1.1, 1. 1, or sorry, 1.6 times 2 to the minus 4. Okay. Um, what would happen if I added that to itself? What should I get? I should get 0.02, right? Okay, do I? Well, what is 0.02? Or sorry, point, point 0.2. Okay, all right, it's that. So let's look though at the, um, the actual arithmetic. So what is 1.6 times two to the minus three? Like, is that actually equal to 0.2? Why not? Or is it? Okay, 1.6, let me think of that as 16. What's 2 cubed? 8. So 16 over 8 is 2, and then the decimal is in... So, okay, so it works, right? Um, but if I start to do, like, throw in lots of random digits here, okay, so you see how I keep adding digits and the number is not actually changing? Why not? I can't get any more precise than that, okay? So let me actually just go back to the, to the uh, example of pi, because, right? Notice that the number didn't change any way after I added a fourth decimal digit, okay? The, um, because I ran out of bits, okay? And if I made this a two, say, um, yeah, so the, the problem, right, is that how many bits do I have to work with in my mantissa? In our 8-bit scheme, we only have 4. In this scheme, how many do we have? 10? Okay. Um, and it doesn't matter how many you got. Eventually, you're going to run out of them. Okay. So there will be a loss of precision at some point. The 8-bit scheme just really exaggerates it. Okay. And we'll look at, like I said, another example uh, here just to, to make that, that more clear. Okay, so this is inevitable, no matter how many bits you use. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go back to here and let's take, um, well, okay, let's just uh, take the number that we just got, 4.75, and we'll use that as one of our two numbers. Okay, sound good? All right, and let me add to that one eighth, point oh one, uh, or sorry, point one two five. Okay. All right. So what did we get for four point seven five? It was. 
was uh, zero sine bit, five for the exponent. What was the mantissa? Zero, zero, one, one. Okay, so that was 4.75. All right, and then let's encode 0 0.125, which is an eighth. Okay, so step one, right? Write it in binary style scientific notation. So no halves, no quarters, one eighth times two to the zero. Is this normalized? No. So how many times do I need to move the radix? Three. Okay, so this would be 1.0000 times 2 to the third, uh, negative third. Okay. Okay, by the way, uh, powers of 2, what are their mantises always? Hmm? If you have exactly a power of 2, the mantis is always zeros. That's it. Okay, because a power of two is one point something times two to the something. Well, or sorry, one point zero times two to the something. The mantissa is the point something, which is always zero for a clean power of two. Okay. Um, okay, so that's our number. One and then four zeros and two to the minus three. Okay, so what is the exponent here? It looks like minus three, but how am I going to actually encode it? I'm going to encode zero, okay? So my sign bit is zero because the number is positive. The exponent, I need to encode zero. Well, what is zero? Zero, 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 okay? And then my mantissa is, oh, that's interesting. Um... Well, yes, okay, I didn't intend for this to be the example, but um, I, I guess this is what math gives us, right? Um, okay, so we did everything correct, right? And this is what I would have written down. But if we look at that encoding, Something feels a little weird there, right? Okay, because wouldn't it be the case that we ought to be able to encode zero also as a floating point number? Yeah, it would might be useful to be able to encode zero. Okay, so what's the problem, though? You look at this encoding and... In a sense, this really ought to represent 0.125, right? We've done everything correctly, but we just so happen to get a bit pattern of all zeros. Okay, so so we, we agree. That happened. Okay. We also would like to be able to encode zero. It's a perfectly important number. What, pray tell, ought the encoding of zero be? As an integer, what's the encoding of zero? Just all zeros. Okay. So what should our floating point encoding of zero be? Okay. It's actually all zeros. Okay. So we've got a problem here, which is the bit pattern of all zeros, wouldn't it be logical to have that represent zero? Okay. But... According to what we just did, should it also uh, represent this 0.125? Okay, it can't do both. So which one are we going to pick? Which one's more important to be able to encode, 0 or 0.125? I would argue 0 is more important to be able to encode. Okay, um, so this is one of the exceptions to the rule. Okay. Now, why is it that zero has to be an exception to the rule? Well, what was our rule about uh, scientific notation? There must be a precisely one one before the radix. Can zero ever be written in that form? No. Okay. So zero is an exception. And there we just ran into it. Okay. Now, 
would you guys agree that it was a little ridiculous we ran into it with just 0.125, right? That's not a hugely important number. Okay, but for sake of uh, demonstration, let's go back over to our flow toy and let's do this in uh, 16 bits. Okay, the representation of zero, okay, is this. Okay, um, all zeros, okay, not a shock, right? But this, again, is an exception. Yeah? Okay. Now, if I flip one of the bits, so if I flip this very last bit, just for sake of demonstration, uh, would I have zero anymore? No. Okay, it's going to be a really tiny number. Let's see what it is. Well, if it'll cooperate. There we go. Okay, we get blah times 2 to the minus 14, okay, which is 5.97 times 10 to the minus 8. Okay, teeny, teeny, teeny number, right? Um, so the 8-bit scheme, like I, I think I uh, mentioned Friday, would we ever actually use that in practice? No, because would you guys agree that the fact that we can't even encode 0.125 is kind of absurd, right? That's not all that precise of a number, okay? Um, it gets better, because they're going to love this. Could I encode 0.125? Well, in w let's go back to our 8-bit scheme. Okay, so according to this, could I encode 0.125? No, because the encoding I would get collides with the encoding for zero, and I have to say, no, 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 zero is too special. I'm going to give zero that exception. Okay. Um, could I encode 1.125? Yes. Which, that's a little weird, right? I can encode 1.125, but not 0.125. Okay, let's convince ourselves that I can actually encode 1.125. All right. 1.125. 1 1.001 times 2 to the 0. Um, do I have to do anything? Nope, it's great. So, sign bit 0, exponent of... Zero, which really is three, uh, mantissa zero zero one zero. Bam, there it is. That was easy. Okay, so do you guys find it weird that I can encode 1.125, but I can't encode 0.125? It's a little strange, okay? And um, maybe another way to think about this is, let's think about what would the largest number that I could possibly write down using this encoding scheme? Would you guys agree that it would be that? Okay, why did I come up with that? Well, positive number, okay, if I want the largest, then clearly it ought to be positive. Um, and let me just make the exponent, like, let's just take everything up to 11, right? Make the exponent as big as I can make it. Make the mantissa as big as I can make it. Just put ones everywhere, right? It's the, the Oprah Winfrey special. You get a one, and you get a one, okay? All right, so what does this represent? Well, the exponent looks like a, the exponent bits are here. This looks like seven, right? So what does that really count as? Four. Okay, so this is two to the fourth, one point, and then one 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 times two to the fourth. Okay, and why four ones? Well, because that's what our mantissa was. All right, and if I shift the four over, or sorry, the the radix over, how many positions? Four. Then I'd get one 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 times two to the zero, and what is one 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 one? Okay, well, I've got a 1, a 2, a 4, an 8, and a 16, and that adds up to what? 31.
Okay, so 31 is the largest number that I can encode using this 8-bit scheme. Okay, I think we could agree that 31 is not all that gigantic. Uh, accordingly, what do you think the smallest number I can encode is? Yeah, negative 31, right, in the, the negative direction. Okay, great. Um, so how many things can I encode if I allow myself to use 8 bits? How many different uh, uh, patterns could there be? More than that. 8 bits. What's 2 to the 8th? 256, right? So... I can encode 256 different things with this scheme, right? I've got eight bits. We just said the biggest is 31. The smallest is minus 31. Zero ought to be in there somewhere, okay? And so I can encode 256 different things in between minus 31 and 31, okay? And as we've seen, though, with our 0.125 and our 1.125 example, they're not evenly sprinkled out in between there, right? So imagine a number line between minus 31 and 31. Could you divide that evenly into 256 different little chunks? Yeah, you could, right? That's not the way the floating point stuff does it, though. You get more precision in some places and less precision in others. So it'd be like carving up that, that um, number line in non-even chunks. And uh, sorry, that's just the way it ends up. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so there are some exceptions to the rule. Um, zero is the most obvious. There are some other exceptions that are defined by the uh, IEEE standard. Um, for example, there's a not a number exception. Okay, so a particular bit pattern that represents not a number. Um, and uh, it actually, it actually is this pattern, if we're strictly speaking gonna uh, obey the floating point uh, the way IEEE says it is. Uh, and then if the sign bit's a one, it means a different kind of not a number. Um, why might having a not a number be a good thing to encode? Well, okay, let's say I'm building a calculator, right? Calculator ought to be able to handle kind of weird exceptions. How can you make your calculator freak out? Division by zero is a good one, okay? Because what happens if you divide by zero mathematically? Well, you can't, right? And if you do it on a calculator, what is it going to do? It's going to say error or division by zero or something like that. Well, how does it know that you just divided by zero? Okay, or maybe better put, like, is it a shock if you divide by zero, right? Like, would the calculator know that you're dividing by zero if you type in something divided by zero? Well, that's pretty obvious, right? But what happens if you divide by a non-zero number that's really, really, really small? You could, well, you're not going to get infinity, but you're going to get a really, 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 really big number, okay? What happens if that really big number is larger than the largest number expressible by that machine? then what ought to, ought to throw? It ought to say, hey, error or something, right? Um, okay, so does anybody happen to have a calculator with them? Like, well, or your phone for that matter, but like just if you've got, uh, grab your phone or a regular calculator and just type in, right, two divided by zero or something, okay? My phone just says error, okay? Uh, well, most of you guys seem to have iPhones just kind of looking around the room. You've got, well, actually, this is funny. Hey, Siri, what's zero divided by zero? Nothing. 
<laughs> so it used to be a little funnier. It used to say, um, imagine that you have zero cookies and zero friends. And then it basically like, and you were sad because you have no friends. And Cookie Monster is sad because you have no cookies. And so it's like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> touche, Siri. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So there are some exceptions to this. And now, how do you figure out what the exceptions are and stuff? Well, you have to. I know this. This pains us as men because we are genetically predisposed to not do what I'm about to do. Um. read the manual. Okay. So, um, well, okay. Uh, it wants us to pay for it, but it's in there somewhere. Okay. So point being, if we wanted to understand, and like I said, there are exceptions, there have to be. Okay. Uh, we just have to go look at the manual. And again, as men, we are genetically predisposed to not do that. Right. I mean, how many of you guys have got something from Ikea, right? What's the very first thing you do? You throw the manual away and then you spend six hours trying to figure out how to put the dang thing together. Yeah. So exactly. Right. Um, okay. So, yeah. Now, the, the exceptions are not maybe critical for our purposes, but they do exist. Okay. And... If we were to be writing like software or designing hardware to implement this kind of stuff, we'd have to be cognizant of those and design it uh, accordingly. Okay. All right. So the salient point here, right, is that particularly when you start doing arithmetic with these things, you don't always get the number that you're expecting to get. You might. A lot of times you do because. I've engineered the question so that it works out nicely, okay, but not always do you get that precision um, that you would expect. That's annoying, yes, but as Boris Johnson said, them's the breaks, okay? All right, Gucci? All right, see you guys on Wednesday.